I wanted to make a short video on how I'm setting up a fish tank to be my growing area. I have a degree in horticulture from the University of Guelph in Ontario. And um, at one time I had well over 500 plants and trees. And then as I started downsizing several years ago, I decided to pick just a few types of plants to grow. And one of them are micro miniature syningias, which are in there. That is a um, salad tray from the supermarket. I bought a salad and saved the tray with the top. And that's been on a table with the top on it. But I decided to go back to uh, growing them the way I used to, which is in a fish tank. Now, the fish tank is basically dry, except I added about two cups of water to the gravel that you see there. So when you open the lid, the inside is humid and warm, and yet because there is a vent in the lid of the fish tank, there is some air circulation. If it gets too humid in there, I can always just open it like this. Now, you see these bricks in there, and the syningas are up on a piece of slate rock. And in this case, that's to keep them a little bit closer to the light. This is an older fluorescent light bulb, and as they age, they dim a little bit. If I had put a new light bulb in, I could have the plant containers down on the gravel. But what I'm doing is I'm going to be starting some new syningia seeds and I just wanted to show you how I'm going to do this. This is a baby food jar and over here on the floor there are nine more of them so I'm, uh, I bought ten jars of baby food and have emptied them out and am now washing them and they're going to get washed with very hot almost roiling water because I, not only to get all the food residue out, but I don't want um, any biological anything in there. I want them almost sterilized. And then I bought potting soil. And this is, this is a brand I haven't bought before. But again, it was at the supermarket. Earth Grow Potting Soil. And I've opened the first bag, and I have it in containers, because what I needed to do was add water to this and get it damp. So this is now damp soil that I'm not covering because I don't want uh, the moisture to start anything there. I'm letting the moisture evapor evaporate naturally. And then in this bag are marbles. And what I'm going to do and I'm not sure if you can see it in this one. Um, in that jar are about five or six marbles on the bottom. And what that does is provide drainage to um, the soil. And there's a reason I'm doing this in baby food jars. These plants are so small, as fully grown, they're only an inch across. And yet, um, I think you can see in there one of them is already blooming and many of them are are starting to bloom. Let me see if I can zoom in on that one blossom. They're a very pretty tubular flower, similar to like a streptocarpus. Um, they're related uh, roughly to the streptocarpus. And you can't really see that blossom, but they're a very pretty purple color. And they're small enough so that if, for any reason, I needed to take them with me or um, even needed to ha have each plant have its own environment, I can just put the lid back on, put this on a windowsill, and the plant will be perfectly happy in there. But for now, what I'm going to be doing is uh, setting this up with the 10 baby food jars in the aquarium and this gives me an easy way to 
I have two recent seed batches and of those seed batches one is slightly darker than the other, the seeds themselves. And I don't know if um, some kind of natural mutation is going on or something. So I can label these jars lighter, darker, batch one, batch two. I can label them somehow and keep them separate. If they start to bloom, even while they're in there, I can put the lids on the baby food jars and keep the blossoms separate from each other. Um, Syningas ten, uh, tend to self-pollinate, but if I have two varieties in the same area, there's a chance they will cross. And um, you never know. I could have a spider in there. I could have um, a fly. I could have anything end up in the tank and cross-pollinate. And if I don't want to do that, an easy way to keep them completely separate is keep them contained. And so I could just put the lid on the baby food jars and know that nothing has gone near that blossom when it's been blooming. So to do this yourself if you want, um, with there are several varieties of uh, micro miniature syningias. These are syningia pusilla which is actually a um, species and not a hybrid at all. And the seeds themselves are like dust particles. So I have put marbles in the bottom and then damp soil. And this soil right there is just a little bit too damp. So I had a piece of paper towel. I stuffed some paper towel in the top of the jar to wick away some of the water. You want the soil just damp but not wet. And now what I'll do is I'll take the seeds that I have and sprinkle a few of them on the surface of the soil and then I will put the lid on the baby food jar. And then I will label it with the date that I planted the seeds and in about, well, anywhere from nine days to three weeks um, the plants will start to come up, and they're very, very tiny. Um, I've had a jar like that hold 10 plants for a while, so um, they can be a little bit overcrowded. I have about, well, those are in the center, more or less in the center of the tray, but I think there's about 20 or 25 plants in there and they just keep blooming and uh, setting seed and blooming and setting seed. They're a fairly easy plant to take care of as long as they have high humidity. You can grow them very similar to an African violet. They're also related to those. Now, um, this isn't very expensive to set up. Um, I had the fish tank. I, I actually have a couple of them. and even if you buy a fish tank, they're not all that expensive. It gives you a grow light in the fluorescent bulb, and it gives you a contained environment. And set up like this, um, I will get them planted, put them in there, and I leave the light on for about 12 hours a day. It's not a, um, a bright light. It's not like full sunlight. So they need a little bit more light as far as the time period than if they were on a windowsill. In other words, um, that container over there um, that you see the plants in, that used to be about two feet away from a southern window. But the shades were drawn on that window quite often, so it was getting very diffused light and probably from 6 in the morning to about 6 at night. In here, I need to give it at least 12 hours of diffused light if I want them to keep blooming. You can go longer if um, you feel, if they start to stretch out at all or look like they're uh, looking for light, you can leave it on longer. So that is um, a simple way to set up syringes, and as, as I said, um, the seeds are like dust, so I'm going to very carefully try to put under 10 seeds in each jar, and then 
after they germinate and they're about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch tall, I can then, if I want to, transplant them into little, they're called one-inch thumb pots. And they really are uh, plant pots that are only an inch in, uh, an inch across. And when you do that, then again, if I, if let's say I put a bunch of thumb pots on this side and a bunch of thumb pots on this side, if I end up with two colors of blooms, the natural bloom is purple. If I end up with anything other than that, then it's a little bit of a, a mutation. I can put a plastic, a rigid plastic sheet in, right down the center of the tank and divide them in half to keep them separate that way. So the tank gives you a very good way to control their environment. And um, this earth grow potting soil is just a general purpose potting soil. The baby food was on sale. It was like 67 cents a jar. And um, when you think about it, each jar is a mini ter uh, terrarium. And you can also set these up like that. In, in, um, in the past, I've had them in like uh, goldfish bowls, and I put saran wrap over the top. But what happens with that is that um, it's not as easy to maintain them individually. In other words, they grow like they are in that tray, um, but they tend to clump together, they tend to intermingle, and I want to keep them a little bit more separate now, so I'm setting it up this way. They're a wonderful little plant to grow. If you don't have an, a lot of space, um, I still have the space I had before, but I may be moving soon. And if I do move, um, all I really have to take with me is this fish tank if I can't take the rest of my plants. And I will always have a little indoor garden. And they're very cheerful little plants that don't ask for much. And they do bloom often, and they are very pretty. A couple of other things to add. Um, one option I may use after I get the seeds planted in the baby food jars is to actually put plastic wrap over the top of them and held in place with an elastic band. And that will save me from having to take the lids off during the day. Um, it's just a matter of convenience. I can, I can put the lids on and leave them on there until the, se the seeds germinate and the plants start to come up. Once they come up, I should have plastic on the top instead of the lid, unless I'm going to put them on a windowsill or something. And that brings me to the next point. Um, if you do this with the baby food jars, for any of the micro miniature syningas, you don't want them in a south window on a windowsill. Uh, the best would be an east-facing window, and the second best would be a north-facing window. The south and the south is definitely too bright. They they will fade and turn brownish in bright southern exposure. And the west is like your third choice, but it's still a little bit brighter than either the east or the north. Um, I've grown African violets, which again are related, in a north window with very little care, and they love it. So east facing is the first preference and north facing is the second preference if you're not going to set up a fish tank. If you're going to put them on the windowsill, you either need a little terrarium type setup like a baby food jar with plastic wrap or the lid on, or you need a salad tray with a clear plastic lid that fits on top. In fact, um, I kind of stuffed the lid over in the corner here because I'm not using it. But that's, that's the lid. And if I took the tray out of there again, I just fit the lid back on. And every once in a while, I will crack the lid off a little bit and let fresh air in there. 
or if it's a very rainy day and they're not in bright sunlight, I'll take the lid off for a couple of hours. As long as they're not going to get scorched by bright light or sunlight, um, they, they can be without the lid. Other than that, they really need an enclosed environment to do well.